somebody that inspired your 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 beliefs and the way that you, that you think and like your your I guess your stance on everything you know or did is, have you always been <clears throat> interested in it or well I've always been in, I've been interested in um, religious experience right I mean, why just what it means for people personally and just what the possibilities are as a, as a teenager I just you know I was as interested in just what is, you know, what are the limits of reality as anyone else. And so to some degree, my research there has been scientific and now increasingly scientific. But early on, I just, I was interested in religion as a possible account of, of what's true. And um, I was also interested in the kinds of experiences that the founders of, of the world's religions have had or seem to have had. So I'm interested in the kind of experience that would get Jesus talking like Jesus or Buddha talking like Buddha. And, and I, I've sought those experiences with drugs and meditation. And, and um, it's, very, it's cl- absolutely clear to me that there is a range of experience there that is hugely motivating and real and accessible and has been traditionally described only in religious language and seems to cash out the crazy claims of of the various religions. So like so if you're a, if you're a devout muslim and you start having the kinds of experiences that we've had on acid or th- that that people have had in intensive meditation retreats um, they get framed in very much in doctrinal ways. So it seems to justify your infatuation with this one revelation, a revelation which is intrinsically divisive, which argues that you should hate everyone who's not in the fold. Um, So clearly we need a way of talking about these kinds of experiences and valuing them that is, which is, which is just as generalizable and scalable as uh, the, the, the larger conversation of, of reason and, and, and science-based thinking about the nature of reality, and, is not in princi- and therefore is not in principle divisive. One of the things that McKenna always said in describing the difference between religion and a psychedelic experience is that in a psychedelic experience, you don't have to believe anything. Right. Just go on yeah. in, and you'll, you're going to experience it whether you like it or not. You're going to get hit by it. How you interpret it and how you disseminate it inside your own head is one thing, but it's not like a religious experience in that you don't have to believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which and is probably the beauty of it because, you know, the ego wants you to hold back to all and can retain all control of your, your faculties at any given time. You, you don't want to relinquish control to some sort of a foreign substance, some sort of a drug, some sort of a thing that, you know, you're going to give up your whole body and your mind for three hours. Fuck that. That's too long. You know, that, that, that freaks people out. Yeah. But well, some it, of the, it freaks me you know, I, it freaks people out with good reason because there is there is a chaos factor to psychedelics which you don't get doing yoga. Now, I mean that's that's <laughs> that's their power and their their peril because the I mean, what, the other thing that McKenna said, um, which is obviously quite true, which, which is that if you teach someone to meditate, or you teach them to do yoga, or you teach them to you tell them to do whatever spiritual discipline you think is so potent based on their talents or based on their happenstance or, or nothing might happen. I mean, they, they, just, they just might get bored. They, it doesn't matter if, if they do it for a, an hour or a week. It's not necessarily going to move them. But if you give them 100 micrograms of LSD or, or a sufficient dose of anything uh, in that family, um, there is just no question something's going to happen. Now, it could be very pleasant. It could be very unpleasant. It could be mixed. But there is there is going to be a, a, a break with their ordinary consensus trance of egoity. And um, so that's it's a shortcut. Huge. It's, so a, it's a huge you, shortcut. But it, the problem is it does just sort of just puts you in a slingshot and you're not quite sure where it's pointed. And then you're – it's – you're going there. So it's a know. method, but you think that uh, meditation is probably an equally effective method if you, if you really follow it through. I mean, I think, I think of meditation the same way I think of martial arts. Mm-hmm. You know, I could, I could teach you a, a spinning wheel kick. I, I could show you it. Right. And you might not ever be able to do it right. You, you might not have the flexibility, the coordination, whether it's a mental flexibility. You might be, not be able to focus on it enough or be intense enough or spend it, you'd be disciplined enough to stretch yourself enough to pull something off. But you right. can't say that uh, another person can't pull it off. It is possible to pull it off. It's possible to be an expert at it. But out of all the people that you teach this 
you know, like a kundalini or some intense form of meditation where you achieve altered states of consciousness, how many people are going to have the focus, the drive, the discipline? How many people are going to put in the time and the numbers to actually pull off an altered yeah. state? I have never yeah. done it. Well, you know. uh, I completely agree with that, except there's one caveat, which is I think that the center of the bullseye of altered st- states of meditation is not so altered. It's not. It's actually the the, the thing that that you want to realize from a from a, a contemplative point of view is not actually the same as the full kaleidoscope of effects you get from psychedelics. It's not just. And this is a, a distinction I made. I think again in the end of faith between. Um, uh, the content of consciousness and realizing uh, a specific property of the, the nature of consciousness. And there's no question that 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 in our ordinary waking consciousness, the, the content, the spectrum of content is, is trimmed down. I mean, we have, you know, there's just a kind of a feeling of it's, because it's all solid and it's just me here in my body. I'm kind of locked in my head and it's you over there and not, there's no the, the 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 energy of the situation is 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 quite um, limited. Uh, yeah, and and there are not too many surprises. I mean, we we have all kind of been taught neurologically to just perceive our ourselves in the world. You give someone LSD or psilocybin or mescaline, and that begins to change radically, and it changes for everyone. And it can be terrifying. It can be incredibly blissful. Um, and, but what happens is people are flooded with new content and new feelings of meaning and new feel and, and new uh, um, just the energetics change. So you, t- you put your hand on a tree and you feel like the, the, the buzz of, of kind of living contact with a tree, in w- which you have never felt in your life. Um, all of that kind of the more aspect that you get with psychedelics isn't really what isn't the point of meditation and th- it comes with meditation. So if you go on, you know, a three month retreat where you're just meditating 18 hours a day and every time your mind gets lost in thought, you come back to the practice, whether it's, you know, mindfulness, like Vipassana meditation or whatever it is, it could be yoga that, you know, being in a pressure cooker of intensive retreat can give you that some experience of more. I've never quite had it like what you get in a psychedelic experience. How but, close have you come? Um, well, it's not, it's not the, um, you can certainly get what you get with MDMA. I mean, the, like the full blown empathic, unconditional love really? thing happened. Yeah. You've it, had that? Oh yeah. Yeah. You can. Wow. You know, um, and they're actually practiced within Buddhism. There are practices that are just tuned to that. So the practice of, of loving kindness, uh, called metta in, in Pali, it's just you're just you're just trying to stoke that emotion, and the, it, you're just you're just thinking. It's it's a, it's a very simple practice. You you bring to mind people you love, you're not not romantic love, but just, but people who you just you know your best friend say, and you just meditate on that person, and you just think. Your thoughts of well wishing for them just you just you know, may you be happy, may you be free from suffering may, and just and just connect with your wish for that person 's happiness and you just train that up it, 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 the The crucial piece is once you get concentrated once your mind is no longer wandering into the into the um, into the chatter of just distraction and you can actually focus you get the feeling going and you can focus on the the actual practice. Then you can do it. Then it just it, it gets kindled, and then you're you're feeling very much what you you, you feel uh, uh, on ecstasy, where there's just this. Um, it, be, it, it it becomes it becomes like like ecstasy the moment you move it off because because so you start with someone who's very easy to love, like your best friend, um, and then then the the practice evolves, and then you move it to a neutral person, and then you even move it to an enemy. Um, and so, Whoa. and then, so then you get it, it's, then it's just broad spectrum, you know, 360. I love, I wish everyone happiness. That's the goal of the practice. And, and, but, but wishing with a, a totally focused mind that is not lost in thought. Uh, it is, I mean, j- the truth is just having a concentrated mind that's not getting lost in thought 
is just intrinsically pleasurable. It's intrinsically blissful. It, it's it's sort of it's like the the emotional base note of all the good drug experiences. It's it's, it's like it's sort of kind of the the, the opiate you know, happy feeling comes just with concentration. It doesn't even matter what you're concentrated on. If you're just concentrated on a I mean, Buddhists do practices where they'll just focus on a colored disc, and they they reach levels of concentration. So you're just focusing on a piece of a swatch of red, and you're 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 reaching states of consciousness that are just extraordinarily blissful. Wow, that's uh, awesome. And and but that's again, amazing. that's not that's not the ultimate. That's not the ultimate point of meditation. Concent- concentration is just a tool to use to actually glimpse something about the nature of consciousness. And so that this comes back to what I was saying before, that the that the actual goal and this is this is a difference between just getting more content and and getting the kind of the wisdom that comes with with um, recognizing something about consciousness. The goal is to recognize that ordinary consciousness, without anything getting psychedelic, is a circumstance of of genuine freedom that that the the sense of being a neurotic self locked in the head uh worried about what other people are thinking that can be cut through fully so that it's it's just gone i mean so that the, you can recognize the intrinsic selflessness of consciousness and that can happen without any of the pyrotechnics it can happen without the the rush of energy in the body it can happen without the colors changing. It can happen. It happen without any luminosity of any kind. I mean, so it's like you don't feel like you've taken a drug. Your 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 awareness is crystal clear. It's it, it's 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 compatible with ordinary behavior. You can drive a car. You can. If someone says, "Can you pass the salt?" You don't. You're not this dazzled, stoned person who can't find the salt. You you you're fully here and integrated, and yet. The center has dropped out of experience, and you can just – only the world remains in some sense. You're no longer on the, this side of it looking Obsessing out. personally. Or even just – even the, the sense of subject-object perception. I mean, even just – it's like there's, there's a way of looking – you take any object, and there's a way of looking at it as an object where I feel like I'm over here looking at it. And then there's also a way of still seeing it, but lo- seeing it so clearly that you're no longer you're no longer the the seer. You're no longer the on the outside or on the inside looking out. There's just seeing. There's just Dude, a totality of. This of is seeing. some Karate Kid type shit. You're like become the cap. That's well, what you're no, no, but it's not becoming the cap. It's just become the world, become the I mean, whole world, yeah, the whole, become the, whatever you focus on. Yeah, it become Fox become magic. the become. Most of us feel like we are having an experience. Like there's there's our experience. There's the world of our experience, and then there's us over here having the experience. You know, like we're on the outside looking in, or we're we're kind of looking over our own shoulder. Uh, there's a distance. There's a subject, and then there's all the objects, and it's possible to collapse that distance. In a in a way that is doesn't require any psychedelic explosion, and that is the from a meditational point of view that that is the that's the the center of the bullseye that you want to you want to find that intrinsic property of consciousness, and then you meditate on that. I mean, then you just you drop your distraction and you fall you fall back into that space of just being open. Uh, and aware, and then it doesn't matter what happens. Then it doesn't matter whether you feel bliss or you don't. You're not waiting for the meditation to get good. You're not trying to have an experience that you had yesterday that you, know, you, you that you lost, and you're trying to get back to it. I mean, that's so all of the seeking that tends to come in people's spiritual lives, where they're just trying to get someplace. That's uh, the irony. Is you know, the, the seeking is your problem. You know, see, trying to become happy, trying to, to the, positing a goal, and then seeking it uh, from a from a contemplative point of view is the trap that you want to avoid. You, you mean as far as like behavior is concerned? You mean as far as I mean? You don't mean that as far as like goal setting in life, right? No, I mean, no. I mean, there's, there's certainly a place for goal I was setting. Say, and, how do you have this yeah, attitude and still? 